Welcome. This is the uh, Tennessee end of course practice test number three for Algebra 1, question number 30. Uh, the question says factor x squared plus 7x minus 30. And they give you all your answer choices. So I'm going to do this one two ways. First way I'm going to do it is uh, just factor it as a quadratic. And then uh, from there I'll show you a little calculator trick that you can do to get the answer if and only if on test day you get really nervous and something happens that you forget how to do it uh, the mathematically appropriate way. Or one of the mathematically appropriate ways. Don't let me throw you under the bus and make you feel feel bad for choosing a different method that works for you. I mean, theoretically, you could just graph it as, you know, in the calculator, find the roots and switch the signs, but whatever. Anyway, um, so I'm going to do x squared plus 7x minus 30. The first thing I do when I have to factor this type is look for a common factor. There isn't one. The second thing I do is look at the second sign in this set. If it is minus, I know that my answer is going to be signs that are not the same, so they're different. So I have an x plus and then an x minus. If it is a plus, I know that the signs are the same. And the sign in front of the, um, the term with x will tell me what it is. So if this was plus and this is plus, they're both plus. If this is plus and this is minus, they're both minus. But if this is, if this is minus, it's always opposite. Regardless of if this was minus and this was minus, this one tells me that they're different, so I'd write different ones. You don't put exactly what's already up there. That doesn't, it seems like maybe you should, but it's not. Uh, anyway, so any answer that doesn't have mixed signs, I could eliminate. All of them have mixed signs here, so it wasn't as helpful as uh, I would hoped it would have been. Anyway, the nice thing is, now that I know that the signs are supposed to be different, when I do my factor list for 30, looking for positive 7, I know that I need to subtract my factors uh, to find out which one gives me 7 instead of adding them together. And that's an important consideration in some problems, not really here. So I know that 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and uh, 5 and 6. Those are my factor sets. I need to figure out which one, if I subtract them, will give me 7. No, 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 yes. Now from here all I need to do is make a judgment call on where the 10 goes or where the 3 goes. The quick way to do it is to say that the bigger number goes behind the sign of the first uh, of this term. So since the 10 is bigger, 10 goes here, the 3 goes here. If you'd rather, you can actually just write out the subtractions and see what gives you the answer you want. This gives me positive 7. This one gives me negative 7. So I know that I have to make sure that my 10 is behind my plus and my 3 is behind my minus because I'm looking for positive 7. So there's your answer um, in all its glory, although they did put it, the x minus 3 in front there. Don't let that trip you up. The uh, answer to number 30 is D. Now I said I'd show you a way to do it if you didn't have any idea what you were doing, and that's totally fine. So let's uh, bring up the old calculator here. I'm going to clear it off. You might have heard me say something about graphing it. You can get this one by graphing it if you want to, but you have to know a little bit about how it all works. So if I graph it here, it'll make a parabola. Uh, and what I have to be smart about is these, where it crosses, are actually different signs than the answer. So instead of doing plus 3 and minus 10, I'd look for plus 10 and minus 3. If you can remember that, it's fine. If you have to look for zeros in a type of problem that looks like this, all you do is look exactly at the graph. But this is the factor and not the zeros. Anyway, let's show you what to do if you've got no clue what's going on. You need to hit your X button your whatever your variable for punching in graphs is, and hit enter. If it is zero, you need to go into the window and change the x max and x min to whatever you want it to be, negative five and five if you want it to be five, negative seven and seven if you want it to be seven, and the big deal is you need to graph something. So go in and type, you could just type x if you want and graph it. It will lock whatever you picked in as your value for x. Like I said, this has no mathematical integrity. It's just a trick. So now that it's not zero, I can go ahead and just type in the problem. x squared plus 7x minus 30. And I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to give me 140. What I'm looking for is the answer choice that gives me that same answer. So I said it was D, so why don't I just check to make sure it's the same thing. And then I'll do one to show you that it's not right. Um, x plus 
10. The key here is to make it look exactly like the answer. x minus 3, x plus 10, perfect. If it was a different letter, this still works, as long as it's only one letter. If there's two letters or two different variables in it, it doesn't work, so you have to do it another way. See how the, both of them are 140? You know it's D. Well, it could look like A might be the right answer, so let's type that in. x minus 10, close it out, x plus 3, close that out, hit enter, you get 0. 0 and 140 are not the same thing. So I know for a fact that the answer to number 30 is D. So there's a whole bunch of different methods. Hopefully you're probably getting used to doing the first one by the time you take the end of course test just because in Algebra 2 it'll pop up again or Math 3 or whatever. So, um, you know, choose your own adventure.